fights were pretty good, man. Pretty good. I had to watch them in the back um, on my device that I paid for the pay-per-view. <laughs> um, you know what's interesting to me is, um, tell me if you and Dan, you're balls deep into fighting as me and Chin, you like fighting as well. <laughs> like, I just feel like it's not as... I don't know. I feel like since I went to ESPN, there's just the buzz is gone. The buzz is gone. Like, in all honesty, I used to have to book certain stand-up shows around. If the, it was a if it was a, a, a pay-per-view UFC, we'd usually steer away from that because my, my crowd conflicts with that. Now we just I book shows whenever. It, it's not even a, we don't think about it this anymore. And the shows. No, I'm not bragging that they're sold out. Where before, it'd usually be a problem because it'd be a conflict of interest. So um, I feel like now that's behind two paywalls. And I don't know. The, the star doesn't really exist anymore. Um, it's only on digital, which is a little it's a little aggressive to do that this early. And you look at the pay-per-view numbers. Like I think the one for, who was it? Was, uh, was it Stylebender or Kelvin? They're talking about 70,000 pay-per-view guys. It's under 100 for sure. What, what I heard... From a legit source is around 65 to 70 thousand paper yeah. buys it's, so now it's like i don't know like 70 thousand paper so that that's your diehard phone that went through all these steps to get there and they had their issues and maybe this next one a hundred thousand even at a hundred thousand you're going so far back you're taking so many steps backwards i'm thinking what they're what the ufc's plan is is like we're gonna have to go backwards before we go forward so the forwards is the future but it's like for the fighters, especially the ones who are currently in it now, it's doing them such a disservice because everyone's getting paid except for the fighter. Now the fighter, you know, set, so for style better, 70,000 people saw your fight. Paid for it, illegally streamed, I'm sure there's a lot more, but let, let's just say only 70,000 saw it. Fuck, man. It's not good. It's, it's gonna be hard to uh, negotiate anything now because the UFC is not counting the illegal streams. They're going, Sorry, let's say style bender starches Whitaker. And then he goes like, hey, I want more money. I need more money. The UFC's going go, dude, you only bring in about 70,000 people, dude. We can't give you more money. We, and we've been over that before. It's just, I don't know, man. It's just, it's, it, I think they're going back to me in such a niche, like such a niche sport. I don't, when I'm on the streets, I don't have people talking about Matt. I didn't have one person mention this fight to me. Not one. Over the weekend, usually like when I meet and do the meet and greet, people are like, dude, have you seen the results of Rose, you know, Andrade or Anderson Silva? Or Not one person said anything to me. I don't know. I just feel like it's, it's, it's losing its, it's losing its, its luster a little bit. The, the, and then also what you see now is how we hear Brock Lesnar turn down the deal, right? And, um, you know, Connors, we haven't heard anything from him. So now the UFC is content in just being in cruise control because they have this, this reliable nut from ESPN. So they're set there. So they're, they're not willing to bend over backwards to get a guy like Brock Lesnar now. They don't need it. So they don't have to give Conor McGregor half the company to come back. We don't, we don't care, man. We're good. But for the, the everyone wins, but the fighters are so fucked because such a limited viewership now. So your sponsors are less, if any. Um, your notoriety, your fame, your social media following, your YouTube channel to, to sell merch. The chance of you becoming a, the day and age of a superstar in the UFC is gone, gone. It's so gone. Everyone's There's no more pink elephants, no more gold elephants. Everyone's just gray now. You're just gray. That's how I feel about it. That's how I feel about it now. It's a bummer. So they're locked in for a while though so they'll be fine for what five seven years when you say they the ufc is gonna be fine yeah, yeah. and also notice the direction of the marketing now on espn who do you see now dana white it's very vince mcmahon this is this is the face that you recognize because you won't recognize the fighters but you recognize dana, dana white so his ego and his popularity goes that's the face now that's not good that's not good. So notice all the promos are Dana. Does anyone notice that now? That's all. It's all him. That's insane, man. Whoa. I get it. If you're Dana, like you're like, oh, yeah, I'll do it, or you were gonna do it, but it's just like 
that shouldn't be the focal point of the cell. Can you imagine if Roger Goodell was like, this weekend, Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, going at it. People are like, dude, get the fuck off my screen. Where are the athletes? What are you doing? Why are you selling us on this? It's very Don King-ish, who he wants to be like. He's very, very Don King, very promoter, very P. Diddy, Suge Knight-ish. Dude, get out of the shop. Hey, Mutombo, out of the shop. Get out of the shop. What are you doing? Yeah, I see that. I'm like, ah, oh, what are they doing, dude? But I don't know. It's heartbreaking, man. Yeah, I find it very heartbreaking. People are, I see some people, like, you're so negative with DOC. I'm not negative. It's just, I guess I call it the way I see it, the same way some people complain about the the way of Game of Thrones and stuff like that. The problem is that's a narrative and that's fake. These people's lives are really being compromised here, the fighters, where you were headed in the right direction and now it's like everything everyone's worked for, it's back. And so the I'm sure it's in the current event, so they can't entice and nor do they want to. They're not going to play ball with the big stars. So the chance of Connor coming back, not good. Eventually he will because I'm sure ESPN, the big wigs at ESPN are going, dude, you guys... Like, give us something to get things going here, because these numbers are terrible. Give us something to, to get, you, you got to draw one of these big boys out. So the big boys would be Brock Lesnar, Ronda Rousey, Conor McGregor, who else? GSP. GSP, right? There you go. And then Nate Diaz would be the fifth on that tier. So I'd say GSP, Conor, and Brock are like AA listers. And then you got Nate Diaz, who's and he's he's a minus lister, but he's not in the same range as those guys, unless he's fighting Connor. If he's fighting Connor, you got a superstar fight, and you're gonna pay him up the ass. But if he's fighting anybody else, it's he's kind of that next tier down. It's not a knock on Nate. I'm just saying that's where the demand for ESPN is. So Brock said no, they can't pay. He's like, dude, you owe me this. Like, mm, we don't care, dude. We don't need you that bad. Connor, like, no, we don't need you that bad. GSP. Remember, wanted to fight Khabib. Khabib wants to fight him. The UFC was like, no, we're good. We're not going to pay that much. The only guy that agreed was Nate Diaz. So they got him out. They got him out. So I don't know. Does that correlate to, to subscriptions and paper you buy that they want? I don't think so. But that's what they're hoping for. But somehow they're giving him enough money, flat bottom line, to get him out. I'll definitely watch that fight. Nate Diaz, Anthony Pettis. Cool. But out of all the big, big dogs, all of them said no for a reason, which is very strange. And Brock Lesnar, oh, the right, he does this dance. GSP does this dance. But uh, I don't see the UFC succumbing, being like, all right, we'll pay that because they, they've decided being a niche market and being smaller is the way they want to go. And they cover their nut and they're good where the sport's at. And they're not investing in stars anymore. There's just the, the, the day and age of a star is gone. Is absolutely gone. All right, um, but you know, you, you see this fight, um, these fights. So little knock lost. Of, you know, mm -hmm. you're seventy thousand years old, but whatever. Um, you know, the MVP of the night, I would give to Volkanovski. What he did to Jose Aldo, just kind of dominating. He's such an animal. Um, that's a, such a big win for him. Uh, Anderson Silva, Jared Conaner. Listen, everyone's like, oh, you know, booing Conaner. Listen, the reason Anderson's knee was fucked up is because he was being kicked. It's not because he rolled it or he checked the kick like in the wide mid fight and his leg fell off. No, it's like his knee was fucked up because of Jared's offense. So don't boo the guy, you morons. Don't boo the guy. It's tough watching him too. His face, he was like, oh. Anderson? No, Conaner. Oh, oh, I know. It's so. It's listen. Tough. Cannonier, hold your head up, brother. Even if you would have starched him with a right hand in 10 seconds, they would have booed you. Mm -hmm. Who gives a fuck? Get your, get an acai, get a fat ass in your face, and get back to the States. You did the, the goddamn thing. You won. And the reason you won is because you're kicking the shit out of his legs. Congrats. Also, Anderson Silva, stop fighting. What are we doing? Why do you keep doing this? Why does Anderson Silva keep fighting? Why is BJ Penn fighting? Especially with BJ Penn with all the domestic assault shit. How does that not get brought up? Mm, that's very strange and you hate to see it man but I, I, I don't think he said he's going to stop fighting did he he said he, he wants to go back to get the title uh, 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 
Like, yeah, but still, <laughs> that's his mindset. I love BJ Penn. One of the goats. One of the fucking goats. I don't get why they do it. And so I don't, what's, what, so he, let's say he beat Jared. Okay. Then what, dude? I don't, I don't know where these guys go from here. It's for the, the I, to me, you got to ask, is it for the love of the sport? Is it because of the attention? You don't like not having attention. I imagine it's the latter. If Anderson Especially Silva was a movie, a big movie star, would he be fighting Jared Cunningham? If BJ Penn was a huge movie star and had that same accolades and attention that he gets from fighting, would they be taking these fights? I don't know. Now, BJ Penn's such a fighter, like has such a fighter's heart, probably. And Silva, I don't know. Uh, but after the fight, we did get some big news Saturday. Our friend, Daniel Cormier, after waiting around for a long time, after Stipe Miocic waiting around for a long time trying to get that rematch and Brock Lesnar now being out of the equation Daniel Cormier of course that's official right it, Brock Lesnar it's I guess official. they said that yeah, we, he's a, retiring from MMA um that was a, a statement or, or whatever yeah, yeah 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 so we're hearing that he's retired from MMA I also heard that uh I don't know if this is true. I just read this on Twitter. I forget which journalist it was. Some, I saw a tweet last night. Oh, Brock never got the deal he wanted, so he's retiring. Uh, but apparently, if he if he gets the right deal, he'd come back. But yeah, I don't he know hasn't been removed from the USADA testing pool just yet. So I guess that is the the official mark of retirement to sort of pull the curtain back a little bit. Is if you're not if you're not removing yourself from the USADA testing pool, that means you're probably trying to keep one foot in the pond just in case something comes up or, or whatever it is once you remove yourself from your side because what well, how long does it take once you remove yourself from your side of testing pool to get back into it so you have to be retested how long is it before you can start fighting again six months that's why when i retired um hunter campbell was like we're going to keep you in the usada testing pool and i thought oh yeah okay great and then and then i called him back i said you know what don't take me out of the usada testing pool not so I can run off and take a bunch of steroids. <laughs> That's not what I wanted to do. I said, because I know me. And if I'm in shape and I'm training and then somebody gets injured, I'll be like, I'll take a fight. I'll take it on a short notice. And I, I put my body through enough damage. So I was like, listen, take me out of that USADA testing pool because it protects me from myself. Uh, so if Brock is still in there, that's interesting. But the fact of the matter is, the fight has been announced. Steve Amiochi versus Daniel Cormier. I spoke with DC couple of weeks ago about this and he was like he didn't want to fight Stipe initially because he's like listen he went out there he beat Stipe he, he has nothing but good things to say about Stipe he says he's a great champion great guy all the rest of it is it but how do I top that how do I beat that he said I knocked him out cold in the first round you could and he's right you can't you can't top that you know but you know DC wanted that big payday and, and you can't blame him but that's gone officially the UFC have, have announced it now um, DC versus Stipe the rematch you know, DC's a real fire. He's one of the be very, very best in the world. He was the champ champ, uh, but it brings a lot of pressure. I mean, I understand DC's perspective. It definitely brings pressure. Steve is a big man. He's a very good fighter. He hits hard. He can wrestle. And for a heavyweight, he has fantastic conditioning, good footwork. And we saw that uh, Steve took Francis Ngannou's best shots, you know, and, and still stayed there. Not anybody well nobody's been able to do that so far other than Stipe so um you know it's it's a tough fight for DC because of that not because it's a tough fight and not, not saying he can't beat him but going into this there's that pressure to try and replicate what he did the first time round and will he be able to do that who knows will he be able to beat him again who knows you know you, you got to lean towards him if I'm honest after the way he beat him the first time but it's a very very tough fight and as I say DC is in the gym right now no doubt pushing himself to the limit. Yeah, I mean, look, I'm a big fan of Stipe, and we've had Stipe on the show as well. Um, he's a really, really cool dude. And um, it was interesting, because am I did Stipe specifically sit out because he wanted the title shot back? Why was he out for so long? It's been over a year since we saw that fight. Did he Was he sitting waiting for it? Because obviously he knew something that we didn't if he just sat out for that long waiting. No, well, first off, I don't think it's over a year. I don't think it's even a year yet. I might be wrong, but uh, I think it was International Fight Week last year. Yeah, it was. It? You're right. You're right. Yeah. When's the next well, fight yeah, going to be? But I think it's International Fight Week, so it'll yeah. be a year roughly. But um, yeah, I think Stipe's point all along was that being the dominant champion that he was, setting a record for the most title defenses, he deserved 
a rematch, you know, and yeah, you know, you kind of see his point a little bit. Other fighters in the past have got rematches. You want a young JJ, she got a rematch. And, you know, I, I could think of many more excuses. But Stipe felt that he wanted that fight. UFC wanted to move on. DC didn't want to do it. UFC were kind of interested in doing the Brock Lesnar fight. So it all made sense. But Stipe, you know, he, he stuck to his guns. He said, no, I want my fucking fight and I'm willing to sit out until I get it. So you got to respect that, if you will. Stipe, obviously, is still a, a serving fireman. You know, so he's busy enough. He's got no doubt, you know, he's got some money put away. So he's not desperate to fight. So he sat around waiting for it and it, it worked out. You know, it looks like he's fighting. Well, he is fighting DC again and uh, it's going to be an interesting fight. Yeah, I mean, it should be a great fight. Um, yeah, Stipe is just uh, an animal. And the reality is like, look, John Jones knocked out Daniel Cormier. It's not like it's not like Daniel Cormier can't be knocked out. And if there's somebody that's going to be able to do it, big, massive, you know, heavyweight like Stipe Miocic, it could happen. It could really easily happen. To be honest with you, it's, it's any man's fight. Any given Sunday, either one of those guys could knock the other one out. Um, Dan Cormier is an absolute madman and a monster as well. Um, but I'm really excited to see it. I mean, I'm, I'm happy for Stipe because I do think he did. I think he had a point. I think there is a point there. It's like, you know, a lot of other people, he set some records there. He had the most title defenses ever as a heavyweight. He sort of brought some validity to that heavyweight division after a while of it being some guys that, is, that titles kept on bouncing back and forth. Nobody really held on to it for too long. It seemed like the heavyweight division was thin. And then Stipe Miocha came along and it was like, holy shit, this is a big athletic, real deal heavyweight um and he got beat by somebody who is a big athletic real deal heavyweight so it's like you're talking about two of the absolute best and i don't think there's many other guys in the heavyweight division including brock lesnar that are going to compete with either of those guys no 100 percent. and i think also another reason why stipe wanted that rematch so desperately is because he probably underestimated Daniel Cormier. You know, when you look at DC, obviously not the biggest heavyweight. He's a big guy and he actually came in heavier than Stipe for that fight. But still, you know, he's not the, when you look at DC, he's a big, solid, thick man, you know, but he's not, you don't look at him and see a gigantic man, okay? So he probably underestimated him there. DC also was not known as a one punch knockout guy. So he thought, yeah, whatever, I'm not scared of his fists. And it was actually Stipe that was initiating the clinching sequences. So he thought, probably, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to bully this little man. I'm going to push him around. And, it and he was doing okay. He was. He, you know, he initiated the sequences. He was walking DC down. And as I say, seemed to be giving him no respect. And then, as we all know, they clinch. And when they separate from the clinch, he threw that big overhand right, uh, connected and knocked him out. So I think we're going to see Stipe coming in with a very, very different game plan this time. You know, might see him sticking and moving, keeping DC on the end of his jab and... You, if you fight in DC, you want to avoid the clinch at all fucking cost. It's as simple as that. That's what he does. He's an incredible wrestler. And as we've seen, he also has tremendous power. You know, it's, it's weird. You see these guys going up a weight division and you think they're going to struggle, but they don't. They come in and they do really well because they haven't got to deplete themselves. They're not going through those weight cuts. They're not dieting so hard that they lose muscle and therefore they lose power. They actually move up a weight class. And they seem to have more power. We see it time and time again. So very, very good fight. Congrats to DC and congrats to Stipe on that one. And uh, we'll talk about that nearer the time. What else have we got? What's going on? Stipe gets his rematch. Brock retired, okay. ESPN pay-per-view beef. Uh, let's not get into that. Cormier planned to retire in March. Yeah, he did. But, you know, he hasn't. <laughs> There we go. I think he thought it was going to, when he when he said March, I think that's what happens is, and, and, and actually you mentioned this before where you were like, Adesanya's not going to fight um, fucking uh, Romero, where you're like, ah, well, it's already set up. This guy's got his, his thing. With the UFC, really anything could happen. There's so many, so many different things happen. People get popped for steroids. People get beat. They get injured. They, all these other things happen. So there's no real plans for like the future in MMA. Six To make a plan for six months from now in MMA, it's kind of difficult, right? So I think Cormier was like, cool, I'll hit Brock up. I'll defend my title one more time after that. I'll, you know, put a few million dollars in the bank and then I'll just ride off into the sunset in March. And all of a sudden the Brock Lesnar negotiations fell through. That didn't happen. He didn't have a big money fight to, to you know, put it in its place. And you're like, well, shit, dude, I'm still healthy. I'm not going to just retire and not get those last few final paydays. And I'm sure that's sort of where Cormier's head is at. Yeah, for sure. I mean, he, he said he always wanted to retire by 40. I mean, he's only a few months after that. And he did say he had some injuries as well. So that kind of kept him out of the octagon. Uh, he had a quick turnaround against Derek Brunson. He got that there. But listen, if he comes back and he beats Stipe, I, I think, <clears throat> pardon me, I think for, 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 for DC, 
in terms of his legacy, fighting Stipe again is way better. You know, like a lot of people, they criticize me. They say, oh, yeah, you went after GSP for that big money fight, you know. Um, well, we're fighters and we fight for fucking money. Okay, so we want to be involved in the biggest fights possible. So I understand DC doing that just for the same reason I wanted to fight GSP. But I think it, for DC's legacy, if he was to come back, well, not sorry, not come back, if he was to rematch Stipe and legitimately beat Stipe a second time, then there's no way you can argue that he is one of the greatest of all time, if not the greatest of all time, because a lot of people, they might say, oh, well, he kind of got lucky with Stipe, didn't he? He landed that punch. Can he do it a second time? Well, if he does do it a second time, there's no argument about it. If he beats him twice in a row, DC's the better man. Well, yeah, and I, that. And it's a risky scenario there is a, a lot to gain from that fight yeah and i think that you know maybe that's also going on in dc's mind because he has that win and you're talking about legacy it's like well i have that notch in my belt already why do i need to risk that notch now i sort of have that i have that feather in my cap i can move on get another couple big wins at heavyweight and that's that so um, but when you look at the heavyweight landscape, there's nothing else there. I mean, who else is there for Stipe Miocic? Is there anybody else that I would want to see fight for the heavyweight title? Francis Ngannou. Yeah. Junior Dos Santos. <sighs> Walt Harris. Um, <laughs> the, 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 there's a lot. There's a lot of interesting people. Uh at heavyweight, you know, there's a lot of people I'd like to see uh, DC face. A lot of people I'd like to see Stipe face. The other problem is that Stipe has fought and beat most of them. He beat Dos Santos, he beat Engarnu, and beat some others as well. Uh, DC has only fought Stipe at heavyweight. I mean, oh, well, sorry, pardon me, and Derek Lewis. Uh, yeah. So I'd like to see him face some of those people that I said. It'd be interesting to see him in there. If you have not already, hit that subscribe button with its notification bell and leave a comment in the comment box below of what you thought of the video and tune in for more on MMA News Outlet.